Let us uh, discuss the factors that affect the rate of photosynthesis. So factors affecting the rate of photosynthesis. And before we take up all these factors and how they affect the rate of photosynthesis, we need to understand two points. First, a term which is known as cardinal point. And this cardinal point term or concept was given by Sachs. According to this, every factor has three points. For example, if we are talking of temperature as a factor. So if it is a factor, then temperature would have three points. And these three points would be written as minimum, optimum, and maximum. And every factor would have these three points. Optimum is when the rate of whichever process we are talking of is maximum. Say we are discussing photosynthesis. So let us keep in mind the same process and temperature as the factor. So what would be the optimum temperature for photosynthesis? It is that temperature at which the rate of photosynthesis is maximum. That temperature would be considered as optimum. We have seen in case of C3 plants, 10 to 20 degrees Celsius is the optimum temperature when a particular process takes place at its maximum rate. Minimum temperature would be that temperature below which the rate of photosynthesis will stop. That means, suppose we say 4 degrees Celsius. So, it, if that is the minimum temperature and if temperature falls below 4, the rate of photosynthesis or the process of photosynthesis would stop. Maximum would be that temperature beyond which photosynthesis would stop. So for every factor, we would have a minimum, an optimum and a maximum. And these three points or levels are known as cardinal points. This is one important thing. Second important thing is black man's law. And this is also related to these factors. According to Blackman's law, the factor which is in its minimum concentration would decide the rate of the process. So according to this, the factor which is in least or minimum amount or concentration decides the rate of photosynthesis. Of photosynthesis. Suppose, just to understand this, all the factors which are essential for photosynthesis are light, sunlight, then chlorophyll molecules, carbon dioxide, and water. These are the things which are required or essential for photosynthesis to take place. Just to understand, say we say 10 units of this, 10 of this, 10 of this and 10 of this. Then the rate of photosynthesis is going to be almost uh, steady because everything is available in all concentration. But suppose water is 2 and if this is least in spite of having more carbon dioxide, sufficient chlorophyll in the leaves and proper intensity of light. But because this factor is essential, the rate of photosynthesis will be decided by this one. Because this is one of the raw materials or this is one of the factors. So according to this law, the factor which is in its least amount or concentration decides the rate of a reaction. In this case, it is photosynthesis. So it could be written as any other reaction also. And that law was given by Blackman. So it is known as Blackman's law of limiting factor. Blackman's law of limiting factor. So this is another important thing. Now let us take the factors. We classify these factors into two categories. 
external factors and internal factors. Let us take all these factors one by one and let us discuss how they affect this rate of photosynthesis. First, in case of external factor, say we start with light. Light is a very, very essential factor and we know photosynthesis is totally light dependent uh, reaction. Now, what exactly of light? So, there are three things which play an important role. Quality of light, then intensity of light and C, duration of light. Quality means which wavelength is available and we have seen the absorption and action spectra. It was blue and red wavelength which is the most essential wavelength. So quality of light is about the wavelength. If only green wavelength uh, is provided to the plant, the rate of photosynthesis is going to be very, very low because the main pigments that is chlorophyll A and B absorb in blue and red wavelength areas. So intensity, which is the next uh, thing about light, we divide the plants into two categories depending upon in which light intensity do they perform photosynthesis at the maximum. So here we would use two terms, skeophytes and heliophytes. Skeophytes are called shade plants. They are known as shade plants. That means they grow in less light intensity. They grow best when they are in a shady area. And heliophytes are known as sun plants. That means they grow best in bright sunlight when the intensity is high. So depending upon the plants, a particular intensity is beneficial or is required for the photosynthesis to take place. And duration, that means what photo period is required by the plant. So normally it is 10 to 12 hours. So when we take light as a factor, all these parameters are important. And in general, if we have to conclude, what would be the effect of light on the rate of photosynthesis? Generally, increase in light intensity increases rate of photosynthesis in general. But if light intensity becomes too high, then rate of photosynthesis will decline and ultimately will stop. So very high light intensity slows photosynthetic process and then and stops it. Because very high light intensity would result into increase in temperature and that would result into closure of stomata. So there would be no gaseous exchange so the process will stop. This is first factor that we are talking about. The second factor again under external factors, second under external factors let us talk about carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide concentration. Carbon dioxide concentration anyways in the atmosphere is very, very low, but that is more than enough for plants to perform photosynthesis. So if there is slight increase in CO2 concentration, the rate of photosynthesis increases. This is known as carbon dioxide fertilization effect. Carbon dioxide fertilization effect and reason why it is known as fertilization effect because when we add fertilizers to the plant the productivity increases but this is applicable only when there is a slight increase in concentration if concentration of carbon 
carbon dioxide increases a many folds. So more carbon dioxide concentration reduces the rate of photosynthesis, reduces photosynthetic rate. And this is called carbon dioxide toxicity. CO2 toxicity. This means slight increase helps in increasing the rate of photosynthesis. We are calling it fertilization effect. If concentration is more, then it acts as toxic and it reduces the rate of photosynthesis. The third factor is oxygen. We know that when oxygen concentration increases, plants undergo a process called photorespiration. So, increase in oxygen concentration decreases the rate of photosynthesis. This is also known as Warburg's effect. It is also known as Warburg's effect named after the scientist. And the reason why this rate of photosynthesis is decreasing is due to photorespiration. So high, o high oxygen increases photorespiration. And we know in photorespiration, the carbon which has been fixed gets released in the form of carbon dioxide. So these are three factors that is light, carbon dioxide and oxygen. Let us take the other factors also, uh, external factors. So let us discuss few more factors here. The next external factor, that is the fourth, is temperature. With slight increase in temperature, the rate of photosynthesis increases rate of photosynthesis increases because as temperature increases slightly the enzymatic activities get enhanced. So photosynthesis which is also an enzyme dependent process that would also become faster. But at very high temperature photosynthesis decreases, rate of photosynthesis decreases and ultimately it stops. Because very high temperature becomes a stress situation for the plant. And during stress situation, abscisic acid, which is the stress hormone in case of plant, closes the stomata. So at very high temperature, stomata close. And because of this closure of stomata, gaseous exchange also stops and that would again result into decrease in the rate of photosynthesis and finally the rate or the process will stop. The fifth factor is water. Water is the raw material and obviously if raw material is not available, then the photosynthetic process would ultimately slow down and stop. So with water, because it is a raw material, the result or the change or effect on photosynthesis is quite obvious. Now let us come to internal factors. The first factor which we want to discuss here is termed as protoplasmic factor. Protoplasmic factor. This factor is actually an, an imaginary factor, an hypothetical factor. Scientists just believe that there is some factor inside the cytoplasm of these cells which decides the rate of photosynthesis. So that factor has not been isolated, not been discovered and that is why we call it an hypothetical factor. The second internal factor is chlorophyll content. And here we will use or understand one number or one term which is known as assimilatory 
number. This number means or it can be defined as the amount of carbon dioxide fixed, amount of carbon dioxide fixed by or per gram of chlorophyll per hour. This is known as assimilatory number and this is very very important for plants which have variegated leaves. So this is or this plays a very important role in variegated leaves where the leaves either have some other colorations other than green because the other coloration is because of other pigments and that would affect how much chlorophyll content is present in the plant. Another internal factor could be number of chloroplast. Next factor could be number of stomata and the position also. That means whether they are present in the upper epidermis or lower epidermis or whether they are sunken stomata, all these factors would affect the rate of photosynthesis. So if number of chloroplasts are less, then rate of photosynthesis would be less. If number of stomata per leaf per unit area are less, that would also affect the rate of photosynthesis. So there are certain internal factors and external factors which decide the rate of photosynthesis. Now we have to discuss the last part in this chapter and that is translocation of photosynthate. When we are talking of photosynthate, in many books they have given one more factor which is in the list of internal. They say that if this photosynthate accumulates, then also the rate of photosynthesis would reduce. So we will add this point also here and that says accumulation of photosynthate decreases the rate of photosynthesis. Photosynthate means the substance or the product which is produced as a result of photosynthesis. We know it is synthesized in the form of glucose and it gets transported as sucrose. So in a leaf when photosynthesis is taking place, glucose is getting synthesized and that glucose gets accumulated there in the form of glucose or sucrose in the leaf itself. Then also the rate of photosynthesis would get reduced or stop. So let us now talk about how is this photosynthate moved from the place where it is synthesized to the place where it has to be stored.